So we're all familiar with slices that allow you in Power BI to select certain things. However, what I'm going to show you in this video is how to make slices that can actually select things like measures. So if I want to see concerts versus Facebook likes in these visuals, I can click on those or how to select dimensions. So in, instead of seeing it broken down by the sponsor, I can see it broken down by the singer, by the day of the week, by the city, etc., etc. My name is David Nyman. I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using technical workplace, I'm covering my channel. So check out my other videos if this is the kind of thing you enjoy. So let's get stuck in. What I use this the most for is something like this, where you can kind of pick on the measure and actually changes in the name of the title, etc. It's actually super, super useful. I really, really like this one. All right, so how are we gonna do this? If I add a new page, I'm going to go to the modeling tab and I'm going to choose new parameter and fields. Numerical range is not something I use very often. So my advice would be that either choose measures or choose dimensions. So let's start with measure slicer like this. And then I'm gonna choose all of my measures. So this one, I'm gonna tick that. I'm going to tick this one, this one, I'm going to tick the percent, but be careful about percent. I'll explain why later on. The year to date and year over year changes often don't give you the right results. If you use the defaults, I'll show you those as well. And I'm going to click create. Great. So now what it's done is it's created this slicer. And if I go to my field list, I can see that it's created the measure slicer table, which has three columns, this one, this one, and this one. If we see this in our table view, then it looks like this. So these two are hidden, that means it's hidden. So the measure slicer, what it relates to, i.e. what the name of the measure is, and what the sort order is. Now, you can edit this through this. This is the table that it made, essentially by doing that. We'll show you how to do those edits later on. So what I wanna do if I want this in a visual is I'm going to add a chart. I'm gonna choose a dimension. Let's go with city. And then I'm going to go to the measure slicer and I'm going to tick on this one. So it's going to go in the Y axis and then it's kind of useless when they're all picked, but if you choose one measure, it will do that. Now we have a measure picker. That's essentially what you can do. As you can see my year on year and my white year to date sales are not very good, but uh, generally, if you want something that actually works without a dimension of a month or a date or something, then avoid using the built-in ones from the quick measures. But that's not something I'll cover in this video. All right, so that's essentially how you do it. And then you can create all sorts of visuals which follow the same thing. Now my advice is with this slicer, go to this thing and go to slicer settings and choose single select. By the way, if you don't see this in the modeling tab, then what you need to do is go to file. And then if you go to options and settings and you choose options, then you go to preview features, then make sure that essentially I try and take all of these things, the on object interaction. I don't love at the moment, but I know it's getting better, but we do have field parameters here. So make sure that this one's ticked in particular. And also you can have the button slicer visual as well, which is the new type of slicer. So this is the classic type of slicer, but you can switch this to the new type of slicer by clicking on this one. It will give you a different thing. At the moment, this is very manual, but is something that is, keeps improving. So you need to change the layout. Obviously I would prefer a single column. That would be the better one. And even then it doesn't justify the size to make it in the middle. So I don't love this yet, but I know it's getting better and there are some definite benefits for now. All right. So you do want it to be single select. You don't want people to select multiple ones and you can create multiple charts from it. So if I choose a line chart like this, I can do that by date and choose it from my date table, dim dates. And then always remember that to get it, you need to choose this one, not the hidden ones, but this one. And then if you just tick it, it goes into the wrong field sometimes, but put it in here and it will go in the right place. There we go and then it is changing for both of them. What is cool as well is that it renames it in the title, so that's kind of nice. So yeah, that is a feature that I really like, the measure slicer. Now, a couple of things. So if you have one that is fluctuating between whole numbers and percentages, 
then sometimes it doesn't necessarily give you the best visualization type. What I tend to do to make these work, I'll do a new measure and I'll just say females as percent number equals females as percent and then I'll do multiplied by 100 and then this will be a whole number just like everything else. So if you change it here, it will force it to change that. So now it is not an additional one. Now what happens if I want to add an additional one? I'm going to also take out these two that are not very good. So what you do is you go to the formula that you put in, so this one, and here I'm just going to edit it. So I'm going to say instead of females as percent, I'm going to do num that one. I'm going to keep the sort order like that. I'm then going to actually delete these. So I'm going to select these two and delete them. And it gives you the sort order like that. I mean, if I did it as seven, it doesn't matter because seven is obviously bigger than four. And now we're going to see it's going to reduce it over here. And it's going to do a one that is the whole number like that. Great. Now, what if I want to do a resort? I want to put this, maybe spectators is the second most important one. So I want to put this after zero. I can switch this to 1.5 if I want to. You have to reorder it manually. You can if you want to. But yeah, then you can see it jumps up above Facebook likes. If I want it between concerts and Facebook likes, I can do 0.5, just any number between zero and one. And it will do it like that because it is already sorted. What about if we want to get this working with dimensions? It's kind of the same idea. So let me do another thing here. And I'm going to do modeling new parameter fields. I'm going to say now what are my dimensions I want. So city, I'm going to do extras, country, just all the dimensions. I'm going to do gender, satisfaction, singer. And then my dim dates, I'm going to choose the date the month, the month name, and the year, and also the day name. I'm going to choose one of them from the wrong table, and I'm going to show you what happens if there are no relationships. So if I choose month here, instead of the other month, I'm going to choose create, and we're going to see that that one's going to be wrong. You could have reordered them in that screen, by the way. You can't get back to that screen annoyingly afterwards. So now that I've called it parameter two, it is only editable by this screen. So if I want to change it, I'm going to have this dimension slicer, press enter, and it's going to put it in here. And these are still going to have the names, parameter, etc. You can rename these if you want to here, but it is much more manual if you don't edit it at the onset. So once you've got that, it will create this slicer. Again, I like to do single select. So in this one, I'm going to choose single select and I'm going to choose a visual. Let's do this one. And this is going to look at the dimension slicer looking at a measure. Let's do number of sales. There we go. So sales by city. And then if I switch, it's going to be sales by extras, sales by country, sales by gender, sales by which is great. Now, what if you want both of them to be active at the same time? So what you do is you click on slicer and you click on the measure slicer. Now it sounds a bit counterintuitive, but we're not going to create an actual measure of this. We're just going to use this one in our visuals. So here I'm going to go to measure slicer. I'm going to drag in this one, take out the other one and make sure that something is ticked. Almost always, as I keep saying, make these single select. You can do it another type. You can do like a tile, but it has to be single select, in my opinion. Otherwise, it doesn't really work that well. There we go. And I've put them next to each other, and you can see that the user has full control over that. Now, a couple of things. If you choose something from the wrong dimension table, you will get this repeated data set that is pretty much just the same. Remember, I showed you how to delete things from it if that's not what you want or how to amend things from it as well from the actual function, which would be to just kind of edit this. So if I want to switch this from that month, I can do it from month 
in the dim dates. That's the one that I need. And I'm going to make this more priority. So I'm going to do this 7.2. So it's actually after date and before month name. And then it's going to jump up. There we go. Month is like this. Month name is like that. All right. So when you are building them, what are you going to adjust? Yeah. This is the filter from numerical range. I'll show you a numerical range slicer, but I don't actually really ever find these useful. They're really difficult to use. They allow you to have the user choose a number like this. You can edit the range and stuff like that. And then you would multiply something by it or have it in your measure. It's good for like what if analysis, but I rarely found a use case for it. The other place where you can find parameters is in Power Query. If I was to go to Power Query Editor, you have parameters here. And parameters allow you to specify a different location or a different filter that you can then use in the rest of your Power Query. That's a completely different thing as far as I can tell. But the field parameters are, in my opinion, the hugely useful ones and the most important ones. So if you rename field here, I can double click to rename it. So I can rename it to dimension picker. And then this will only rename it for that. But if you want to rename it for all instances, you can double click and call this dimension picker to. If you are going to insert it, then let's just do another measure picker. Let's choose some different ones, some more variety like this. Then a couple of things. So you can drag and drop them and rearrange them in here. I wish you could edit this after you built it. This is much better than editing the code. Rename it there, add a slicer to this page, tick this or don't tick this. But yeah, super, super useful to be able to get around those issues. Now, if you are going to just add one of these slices to a page, you do get a bit gibberish results. So this will tell me what all of my values are in a table. And if I was to add that to a chart, it would then give you kind of nonsense sort of results. Where I put the measure picker in the y-axis, it just puts them all side by side. But since they're not comparable, it doesn't really make sense. That's one of the reasons why the as percent doesn't really work that well. So they're all kind of in the same order of magnitude. Now, one thing that I like to do when I have a measure slicer, and by the way, I do this in pretty much all my reports, is I like to have a multi-row card they will also look at the measure slicer, but will actually be disconnected from the slicer itself. And the way to do that is if you click on this one, you go to format and you choose edit interactions and you untick this one, you'll always see the values from that. It is still affected by other slicers, by the way. If I was to click on things, you can see that this is changing. So another trick, let's say you want to actually have the fields as a slicer based on this dynamically. You'll see what I mean. So I'm going to duplicate this one. I'm going to click on it, control C, control V. And then obviously one is clicked, the other one is clicked. But here's a little trick. If I move this to this side, I'm going to go to here and I'm going to choose this one. Show values of the selected field, move things around there. So now if you click on the dimension slicer, it will show extras, the extras option, city, the city options, etc. I hope you've enjoyed that. My name is David Benaiman. I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Dagla Workplace, then I'm covering my channel. Thanks for watching.